When Hurricane Harvey was first forming, I honestly had a bad feeling. And the more we watched it, I could see everything was in place for an enormous storm to, to occur. I personally and, and several others in our congregation have been through some other storms. So we, we had an idea of what was coming. We had gone through our emergency preparedness plan for hurricanes. My wife and I have never been through a hurricane. I actually over prepped. There were already problems starting to be caused at the grocery stores. No water, no bread, uh, just basic supplies. The hurricane had, was still a couple days away. Gasoline was no longer available. All of the ATMs were without of cash. Our house is built in the 80s and it had never flooded. So we just, we thought with that kind of track record, we didn't really have to worry. Most of the time when the hurricanes come through, they just blow on through and, and we don't really have that much accumulation. But uh, it took about 24 hours for, I think, the area to really understand and realize that the rain was not going away. It wasn't stopping. The streets became rivers. It was fast. It wasn't something that people can put their children in and, and swim in safety. There were some areas here in the city where the water on the freeways, believe it or not, was 17 or 18 feet deep. I've heard of flash flooding before, but I've never experienced it. And it was, it was very scary. When we saw the water in the street, it was a matter of maybe two hours or Bef yeah, before it, before it, it started in. getting in the house. I mean, we really didn't have time. After the hurricane hit, 911 was overwhelmed and it didn't take long for that to happen. I turn on the news and they're saying, anyone who has boat, please help. There was one line for you to call if you had a boat and wanted to volunteer. There was one or two lines to call if you needed help besides 911. And most of the time, no one could get through. I was like, okay, there's gotta be a better way. About 7.30 that night, I put on Facebook. If I got one or two boats, 10 to 20 people, I, I felt that was gonna be a successful adventure. Like that I would have at least done my small part. For the next five hours, my phone didn't shut off. Everyone wanted to help. Uh, the next morning, we showed up at the stake center, and, and it, I don't know how many bodies were there. And I knew, based on the cavalry, had arrived. I was blessed that I didn't have to be ready. But I knew I had gas at home. I had water for weeks at home. I had food for weeks at home. I could protect my family, but I should also help my neighbors. It was 50 people there already, and promises of five, six more boats, and then seven or eight, and then nine, 10. People from Florida, Oregon, Washington would Facebook us. I hear you have boats. This is my family's address. Can you help them? Social media was eliminating the bottleneck. I came up to the church building and realized they had set up a boat dispatch in the primary room. And then I realized it wasn't just members with boats, it was anybody with boats. And it was, it was people coming from all over had heard about our boat dispatch. It's amazing to me, you know, having so many police officers jump on our boat, having so many fire department jump on our boat and tell us that, hey, whoever you guys are working with are better prepared for it than what we are. I mean, some of the cops that are jumping on our boat, their police station was under six feet of water. So the second day when we pulled up and we had more boats in mass and we had a lot more people on water's edge picking people up out of boats and taking them to the triage. How many more kids are there, just you? Just him. As they were rescuing people, they were bringing them back to the church and we were drying them off, giving them clothing, comforting them. The decision was made that we would shelter them overnight. So we brought more food in and we opened up all the rooms in the building and put them in there by families. I remember when we first entered the shelter, we were one of the first people. Everybody just welcomed us and gave us something warm to eat. That was, when we were upstairs only having granola bars between 10 people, it was nice to change Once and water. have something nice to eat and just get out of where we were, that traumatic experience to the welcome that we got. 
people are under so much stress and duress. I mean, let's face it, there's water in your house. I mean, this is your home. You never thought you'd flood. You went to bed last night, there was no water in your house. You wake up this morning, there's water. Some people had very short notice to get out of their homes before they were completely flooded. Five, six, seven feet of water. So what do you take? You can't run around your house the last minute and try and get things together. You need to have those things in a bag exactly where you want them so that you can pick them up and carry them out with you. One of the things I've learned about emergency preparedness is it's, it's great to be prepared for yourself, but it's also great to be prepared to help and serve other people. If anything, this experience has taught me that the critical nature of having a 72-hour plan, having a 72-hour kit, because truly during that window, there's nobody that can help you when you have a crisis of this scope and this magnitude. I've heard numbers of 850 people rescued. And to think of that number as I'm sitting there answering multiple cell phones and looking at maps of how we can get to people, uh, I don't know how we did the work, other than that we had um, some divine inspiration with us. We had, we had Heavenly Father watching over us every step of the way, and we were doing the right thing.